So this is map 158, functions, graphs, and matrices. This is section 3.3, .3, annuities, loans, and bonds, part two. Okay, in, a previous, in our previous video, we looked at um, an increasing annuity where you're investing $50 a month, you're investing $100 a month into an account that's accumulating over time. In this case, we're gonna look at a decreasing annuity. Um, you're gonna have a retirement account and you wanna make with number 11, you're gonna have a retirement account and you wanna withdraw money from that account. How much money are you gonna have to save in order to draw money off of that account? Um, number 10, uh, we'll look at this one. Um, you're gonna withdraw $50 from an account earning 2% interest. And if you wanna draw $50 each month from this account for five years, how much money will you need to have in order to start with, okay? <clears throat> and we're gonna look at several different scenarios. We want that annuity to get down to zero dollars, or we want to stop withdrawing. We want to know when will that annuity draw down to only be, say, fifty thousand um, dollars. We're also going to use the same math, the same thinking, to say if I borrow money to buy a car, <clears throat> how long will it take me to pay off the car, or what will my payments be if I finance the car for a certain percentage rate for a certain amount of time? Uh, so this is going to work the same. I hope that if you're my 158 students at MCC that you're watching these videos. Um, because I am going to walk you through number 10 using this formula, but I'm also wanting you to learn how to use the technology. So I will set up number 10 using the formula. I'll even do it using the formula. But again, I'm going to want you eventually to be mastering the graphing calculator so that you don't have to manually do the formula every time. Okay, You'll be much more efficient with these problems. Uh, if you master the calculator, the TBM solver in the calculator, okay? So <clears throat> let's start with number 10. And like I said, I'll do the first one with the formula here, right? Present value, by the way, does not always mean present as in right now. It means the starting amount, the initial value, what the uh, annuity needed to be at the moment that you started taking the withdrawals, okay? Um, PMT is your payment, just like in the previous uh, section, uh, R is interest rate, N is times that the interest rate is compounded, um, N is the compoundings, and T is the time in years. So number 10, and again, we'll set up the formula here. You plan to withdraw $50 from an account earning 2% interest compounded monthly. If you want the account to last for five years, how much money must be in the account to begin with? So how much money must be in the account to begin with? That question is, what is the present value? Okay, our payment that we're going to take out is $50. The formula is 1 minus parenthesis 1 plus the interest rate 0 0.02 over 12 to the negative 12 times 5. N is 12, 5 years. And then that all gets divided by the R over N 0 0.02 over 12. Now, if you're going to set up the formula and then you're going to use the calculator, um, I would do this in, in pieces rather than try to put it all in at once. Again, if you master the calculator, you can, but it, I'm going to take some small steps. I'm going to start with the parenthesis. Inside that parenthesis, I'm, I am going to put it in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.02 over 12, 12, not 11, 12. Close the parenthesis, and I'm going to raise that to the negative 12 times 5 power. So this piece here, <coughs> excuse me, this piece here is the point 0.9049. That gets subtracted from 1. In the graphing calculator, I can just do 1 minus, and I want to subtract the previous answer. Notice that above the negative sign, it's got blue A and S, second ants, 1 minus answer. So this whole numerator now is 0.095. That's going to get divided by 0 0.02 over 12. And notice that I put that in parentheses. <coughs> Excuse me. So I get 57.05. That means this whole amount here is 57 times 57.05, and that gets multiplied by the 50. So times 50 is 28. 5262. In other words, my investment account would need to begin with that much money in the account, $2,852.62 
in the account in order for, if my account is earning 2% interest compounded monthly, I can take out $50 a month for five years and that, that account will last me the full five years. Okay. Now, if I did this using the TVM solver, remember apps, finance, number one, TVM solver. Okay. Now, this N is N times T. 12 months a year for five years. The interest rate we said is 2%. The present value is what I want to figure out, and the future value is going to be zero. Um, and then my PY and CY are 12 because I'm taking monthly payments and my interest is compounded monthly. Now, the payment here, if you recall in part one, if you didn't watch part one, pause this video, go back and watch part one. If you've watched part one, you know that our present value, we would make it positive, or our payments, we would make them positive because we're putting money into the account. The future value we calculated was negative because the TPM solver is programmed to process this as if at the end of the time, after putting the money in, the present value in, the payments in, at the end of the number of years, the money would come back out, which is why the future value was negative, indicating direction the money's coming out. In this case, we're starting with a present value. We don't know what it is yet. We know it's 28.52. We don't know what that, what that is yet, so let's just make that zero because we don't know what it is. But we know that our ending value is going to be zero, but we know that we're taking $50 a month out. So we're going to make our payment negative since it's reducing. It'll be the same way when we talk about loans. It'll be the same way when we talk about a retirement account that's being drawn off of. Anytime the annuity is being drawn off of, the payment will be negative. And then now I just need to do alpha solve. And notice we get that same number, the 2852.62. Okay, so whether I use the formula, TVM solver, I'm okay either way. Just make sure that you get that payment lined up correctly. That's going to be the part I, 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 figure, I find that gives students the most trouble. Okay. Now, working through the rest of this, what you may choose to do, I'm going to use the, the calculator for each of them. Um, you may just watch me for a few, um, practice along with me. You may get to where you pause the video, try the problem on your own, restart the video, and watch me do the problem and see um, if you're doing it correctly. I do encourage you to watch all the problems because, you know, you never know when I might come up with a nugget of, of wisdom. It happens every once in a while. Number 11, you're hoping to retire at age 65. You're making deposits into an account earning 6.2% interest compounded monthly. You feel confident that your account will continue to earn that 6.2% interest. And then you plan to make monthly withdrawals of $5,000. How much will your account need to be worth when you retire if you plan to live until age 90? So a financial planner, I mean, this is kind of what they're going to think about. How much money per month will you need to draw off? How long do you expect to live after retirement? What interest rate do you think you can get? This is what goes into predicting how much of a nest egg you need to have available at retirement, right? So um, the present value is what we're going to accumulate. We want to be able to withdraw $5,000 a month. So you're hoping for an, uh, an annual income of $60,000 in retirement. Our PY and our CY are both 12 because we're expecting to earn our interest compounded monthly and we're going to make monthly withdrawals. The interest rate, 6.2% interest, okay? Um, and we want to draw monthly for, um, how many years is that? From age 65 to 90 would be 25 years. So we want to make 300 monthly withdrawals our investment's getting 6.2% interest. We're withdrawing $5,000 um, per month, and our interest is compounded monthly, so our present value would need to be $761,519.39. Okay. If I'm planning for my retirement, I might call that $762,000. You know, you brought it up reasonably for the purposes of this course, for my test that's coming up. Um, I will want you to get it right to the nearest penny, but that's how much money I would need to accumulate in my working years to be able to retire and collect $5,000 a month, okay? In the future problems, I'll try to editorialize less and just get right into the solving, but again, feel free to pause the video,
Try the problem, watch the video, see if you did it the same as I did. Number 12, how long will it take for a $300,000 retirement account earning an annual rate of 5% interest compounded monthly to drop below $200,000 if $5,000 withdrawals are taken annually? So this one's a little bit different. I have a present value, an initial value of $300,000, okay? How long will it take? So it's the capital N I'm gonna be solving for. I expect to get 5% interest. And notice I'm taking $5,000 withdrawals, so negative $5,000 withdrawals each month. Since my interest rate is compounded monthly, my CY is 12. Since my payments are taking monthly, my PY is 12. Starting with $300,000, withdrawing $5,000 a month. Now here, the future value, we wanna get down to $200,000. If the present value is positive, future value must be negative. Present and future value always have opposite signs, okay? TBM solvers program to think that at the end of this time period, you'll take the $200,000 out, which you don't need to, okay? But that's how it's programmed to think. Alpha solve. So wait, it will take 25.3 months. You know it's months because this is NT and we're compounding monthly. So since we're compounding monthly and our payments are monthly, the program is going to interpret this N as months. If you wanna change that to years, remember you're simply going to move to the end, divide this by 12, and that's the same as 2.1 years, okay? Um, personally, 25.3 months is okay. 21.1, uh, sorry, 2.1 years is okay, in my opinion, as long as you label your answers. You must have the labels there, okay? Suppose I wanna buy a new car. Now, when I say the car costs $25,000, if you've ever been to a dealer to buy a car, you know, you've got uh, the price of the car, the trade-in for your car, you've got your tax, title, and license, and all that kind of stuff you might deal with. For these instructional purposes, when I say the car costs $25,000, what I mean by that is I need to finance $25,000. So I've worked out with the dealer, the price of the new car, the trade-in for my old car if I have one, adding in my tax title license, minus whatever rebates they give me, you know, everything I need to find, you know, subtract the money I'm going to put down, the amount of money I'm going to finance, okay? So I'm going to borrow $25,000. What will my monthly payments be if I finance the car for three years at 6% interest? So my present value of my loan is $25,000. The future value of my loan I want to be zero. My interest is gonna be compounded monthly. My payments are going to be monthly. In most loan scenarios, we do talk monthly, okay? The interest rate, is 6% and I'm gonna finance my car for three years, which is 36 months. The question is, what will be my payments? Alpha solve, my payments would be, sorry about this, my payments would be $760.55, okay? So something I like to kind of push here is understanding, I hope we all know, that if you finance the car for a shorter period of time, you'll pay less interest. If you finance the car for a longer period of time, you'll pay lower payments, but more interest. So let's just kind of explore here, A, B, C, D, what would be the cost, what would be the payments if I finance the car for three years? Well, it's 760.55. What about four years? What about five years? What about six years? To change it from a three-year loan to a four-year loan, all I do is change the number of months from 36 to 48 and recalculate my new payment. This is what I think is part of the magic of the TBM solver is that you can re-enter information very quickly and do a new, a new payment, a new um, calculation. Well, we my monthly payments if I finance the car for five years. That would be... 60 months. My new payment would be 483.32. Well, 
What about six years? That's 72 months. My payments would be 414.32. And I like to ask the question, right, which is the better deal? You know that you're gonna pay less money for the car if you finance it for three years. But if you need the car and you can't afford $760, you may need to lengthen the loan, okay? Whether you're the borrower or the lender, you understand this, okay? And I've been in this situation myself. I need a new car. Usually I buy a car when I need a car, not necessarily when I want a car, okay? But I need a car. Can I afford a $760 payment? Can I afford a $587 payment? Should I buy a cheaper car? That's always an option, okay? But here's what I explore. How much more would it cost? I do know that it's gonna cost me more to finance the car over six years than three years. That's a very important piece of information. Another important piece of information, in my opinion, is how much more will it cost? Well, do not, do not subtract the payments and then try to multiply by a certain number of months because it's a different number of months. What you wanna to do to figure out what it costs to finance the car for three years is simply, I go back to my home screen to do this, you're gonna multiply 760 payments, I'm sorry, 36 payments of $760.55. It's going to cost you $27,379.80 to finance the car. I forgot the nine. $27,379.80 to finance the car for three years. For four years, I would multiply 587.13 times 48 months. Nope, let's do that again with 48 months. It would cost me $28,182.24. Then, obviously then see if I made a payment of 4832 every month for five years which is 60 months that would be 28 999 20 and again if I paid 41432 a month for six years or 72 months I'm going to pay 29,831,04. So I know how much more would it cost me to finance the car for six years instead of three years. The cost to finance it for six years is 29,831,04. The cost to finance the car for three years is 27,379,80. So if I do that subtraction, the 29,831,04 minus the 27, 27, 379,80. It's a difference of $2,451.24. And that is a significant amount of money over the six years. This to me is some of what I want to look at into should I invest it? I'm sorry, should I buy the car? Should I finance it over six years or five years, three years, um, and look at that difference? Personally, depending on my need for the car, I might decide that that 2451 is too much extra interest to pay. But what if I try the difference between five years and three years? 28,999, 20, minus the 27,379,80. And that's a difference of 16, 19, 40. I might decide this is too much. The 2451 is too much extra interest to pay. But maybe the $1,600 is that balance. I'm willing to pay the extra $1,600 and then have the lower payment of under $500 for that 60 months. It's up to you. But I, my point here is to not only learn how to calculate these numbers, but then to make the decision as to should I go in this option or not. Okay. <clears throat> this next problem, and my numbering is weird. I, I haven't fixed my numbering here yet. This is really number 14. It came out as number two. 
let's change that to a 14. A new 2019 Ram 1500 has a base price of $32,495 MSRP, manufacturer's suggested retail price, with a special financing of 1.9% for 60 months. What would my payments be? Okay, so let's go back to the TBM Solver apps, finance, enter. Now the base price is $32,495. We're assuming that that's going to be the amount I'm going to finance. $32,495. Special financing of 1.9% interest for 60 months. And again, our PY and CY aren't going to change. What would my payments be? 568.14. It's a lot of month, a lot of money for a monthly payment, but as the owner of a Ram 1500 myself, it's a nice vehicle. Dodge, or now Ram, is also giving the option of a cash allowance of $2,500, but the interest rate increases to 3.49. See, here's where you want to do the math. Here's where you want to do the research. We all know that the lower interest is going to give me a lower payment, but they're also going to give me a refund of $2,500. What would my payments be if I reduced the loan amount by $2,500 by taking the cash back? And, though, increase my interest rate to 3.49%. My payment actually drops to 545.53. Why would they give me this special financing if my payment goes up? I don't know. Try to get you to spend more money? Okay, so... When I go to the car dealer and buy a car, I take my TVM solver with me. When I do some processing, I take it with me, and I suggest that you do the research. And look, you're saving $23 a month, even though you're paying a higher interest rate, because you got a lower price. Okay. If you find a place to get interest rates, you can always refinance a loan to a lower interest rate. It's hard to refinance a loan to a lower principal amount. Okay. A couple more problems here. Pete and Kim bought their home for $250,000. Their mortgage is a 30-year mortgage at 4.2% interest. What are their payments on this loan? I think this is a good problem to work through, quite honestly. Okay? Um, because it's one that a lot of us deal with in our everyday life. Okay? Pete and Kim bought their home for $250,000. The mortgage is a typical 30-year mortgage at 4.2% interest. What are their payments? So if they bought a $250,000 house, 30 years, 360 months, 4.2% interest, PY and CY are both still 12, what are their payments? Their payments are $1,222.54. Now, again, I, can't, I said I was going to editorialize and I just can't help it. Um, that is principal and interest. That does not include your real estate taxes. It does not include your PMI if you wind up paying that. That does not include um, your um, homeowner's insurance. It does not include anything other than principal and interest. Okay. Now, it's been 10 years since Pete and Kim bought their house. So they bought their house 10 years ago for $250,000 at 4.2% interest. They've been paying monthly payments of $1,222.54. Now, 10 years later, interest rates have dropped. They've learned that they can get a new mortgage for 2.8% interest. Should they refinance? Okay. What would their payments be on a new loan? Number four, part A. Number four, part B, what would their payments be on a new 20-year loan or part C on a new 15-year loan? In order to calculate these in number four, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to figure out how much do they currently owe on their mortgage? You cannot simply multiply 1222.54 by 120 payments and subtract that from the amount owned because you would be assuming that everything that they've been paying is principal. They've been paying principal and interest. 
So really, we're going to use a concept we did earlier in one of the problems. Okay, we're going to say they started at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They've been making payments of one twenty two fifty four. Let's just go ahead and round this to that. They've been making payments of twelve twenty two fifty four for ten years. Ten times twelve is one hundred twenty. So if they make at four point two percent interest. 120 payments of 1222.54 off a $250,000 mortgage. What will be the future value of that loan? They would still owe, okay, so I'll write this there, they still owe $198,281 and let's just call it 50 cents. That's what they still owe. So when we get here to number four, and again, my problem numbering is weird. Um, number four, will their payments be on a new 30-year loan or a new 20-year loan or a new 15-year loan? What you're going to do is say, if they get a new loan, the new loan amount would be $198,281.50. Okay? Now, those of you who own a home, who have refinanced, who know much about this in the past, you're selling to me, I can hear you. Yeah, but there's new fees, there's new closing costs, and yes, I'm ignoring that because that is unpredictable. That would be something that you would add into that 198 28150 if necessary. We're just going to refinance with the 198 28150. So if I get a new 30 year loan on this, payments of 360, but the interest rate dropped to 2.8%. And we want to pay this off, getting down to zero. What would their new payments be? Okay, their new payment is eight fourteen seventy three, and that sounds pretty good. That's going to save them four hundred dollars a month. Except that they're in a new thirty year loan, so it won't take them thirty years to pay off their mortgage. It will take from the time they purchased it. It will take them a total of forty years. So Pete and Kim are talking about this, and, and Pete says, you know, if we went into a new 20-year loan, we would still be paying our house off within the original planned 30 years. So if they pay off this $198,000 loan in 20 years, their payment would be 107992 so their payment would drop by 150 or so dollars a month and still pay off their loan in the same amount of time. Okay. C, what would their payments be on a new 15-year loan? Well, if I went to a 15-year loan, this would be 180. Their payments would be 1350. 30. So their payments would actually go up $130 a month, but they would pay the loan off five years earlier because after the 10 years, they would only go another 15 years. They'd be paying the loan off early. Okay. So part D here, what would you advise them to do? I'm not sure what I would advise them to do because I'm not sure I have enough information. What is their situation? Do they have a new expense that they weren't planning on? Are they, you know, it's 2021 when I'm making this video, are they putting solar panels on their roof and they need to pay for it? And so they use this $400 savings to buy the panels. That might be worth restarting a 30 year loan. Do they have kids in college that they hadn't planned for? That might be a good use of that or a justifiable use of that $400 a month, although college might cost a little bit more than that. Um, you know, is there an unforeseen expense, their basement flooded, um, the electrical, you know, is something, there might be a justifiable why they need that money. For part two, the 15-year loan, maybe Kim just got a raise. Maybe Pete's business is doing better. Maybe they can afford to pay a little bit larger payment. And so the 15-year loan might be the better option. You know, you, you never know what their situation is. Maybe the 20-year loan 
is a good option because there's still, the situation has not significantly changed. And they just want to save the money. But they'll still be done in the 30 years. They'll still save 150 bucks a month. So it takes a lot more information than just to say, this is what I would advise you to do. Now, part of that conversation might be, what is the total cost? Okay. What would be the difference in what they pay? Well, let's do the same thing like we did with car loans. If I make, if I go with option A here, a 30 year loan, that's 360 months at $814.73, that is a total of 293,302.80. And I'll let this sink in that for $198,000, they're going to pay back $293,000. Okay. Um, you do pay a lot of interest on a mortgage. Not a whole lot of other option at these, this, this point. $240, I'm sorry, 240 months at payments of 1079.92. Let's make that a 92. That would be 259.180.80. That's a savings of $34,000. That might not be a bad option to save that for thirty-four thousand dollars, or thirteen fifty thirty times fifteen years at twelve months a year. That would be twenty-four three zero five four. So you know that's the other thing to consider. This is fifty thousand dollars cheaper than that loan if they can afford the extra money. So your advice, you know, depends not only on the math and on the loan as to what you advise them to do, but also depends on their situation. Do they need the money out? Can they afford the extra payment to save that much money? Are they somewhere in between, okay? By the way, the other option would be that they not refinance and they have 20 years left on their 30 year loan. Because remember, 30 year mortgage, it's been 10 years. If they just said, let's just stay in our current investment and pay that for another 20 years. So 240 times 12, 22, 54. If they stayed in that investment, that would be 293, 337, 60. So the remaining, if they stayed where they were, see that this cost isn't any different. Okay, um, that's another thing to consider. Yes, you do pay more interest on, on option A here than you do on option B or C, but it's still the same as if they would have stayed where they were. So again, all of these factors come into when you advise, how would you advise them to do? Okay, more than just calculating the math, but I think that this is a significant look at this. All right, one last problem. An employee plans on working and contributing to her retirement account. So this is similar to the problem we did before. If I want to withdraw for my insurance, for my, my retirement investment, $5,000 a month for 25 years of retirement, how much do we need to start with? You'll notice a slight difference in this one. An employee plans on working and contributing to her retirement account monthly for 44 years. And then she plans to live off of her retirement savings for the next 25 years. She expects that her retirement account will earn an annual rate of 8% interest compounded monthly and average over the next 69 years. Okay, that's quite a prediction, but that's what she's calculating. How much should she contribute to her retirement account monthly during her working years? So we tend to think of this, let's just assume for sake of argument that she's going to retire at age 65 and be retired for 25 years, at which point she's a burden on her children or society or whatever. And she's going to save for 44 years, which means that she is 21 years old. At 21 years of age, you say, well, how much money do I have to put in a retirement account? Well, I don't know. How much do you want it to build up to? Well, I don't know. The question is, how much do you need to start is going to be, what do you plan to withdraw? So notice, she plans to make $5,000 withdrawals. Let's go back to the TBM solver. She plans withdrawals. Of five thousand dollars. It sounds like she's starting with. Oh nope, that's what we're going to figure out. Okay, 
she's planning on 8%. And everything's monthly because she's getting her interest monthly. She's going to make her contributions monthly. She's going to take her withdrawals monthly. What we're going to do first is not figure out how much money she needs to put in because she first needs to know what does she want it to accumulate. So the first thing we want to figure out is how much money does she need here? How much money does she need here? And we're going to do it by saying she's going to take withdrawals of $5,000 and at 90, she's going to have zero. Okay. So at 90, she's going to have zero. And that's going to be 25 years, 12 months a year, expecting 8%. What would that present value need to be? So this amount of money would need to be $647,822.61. That's how much her nest egg needs to accumulate to in order to be able to draw $5,000 a month for 25 years and have enough money to last until age 90. The next piece is, how much should she be contributing to her retirement account during her working years? So, in this case, her present value is going to be zero, and her future value is going to be the 647,822. Remember, investment, the future value is going to be negative. 647,822.61. In fact, the way that I'm showing you how to do this, present value is always positive. If not zero, future value is always negative, if not zero. Okay. Now we're assuming that she's starting with zero. She's going to invest 12 months a year for 44 years, hoping for the 8% interest, starting with zero, accumulating up to the 647,822.61. What does she need to invest monthly? $133. And 33 cents. If she can find that investment vehicle where she can expect an average of 8%, if she invests $133.33 a month for 44 years, she would accumulate almost $650,000, enough to live off of until age 90. Okay? Let me think about this. 133, 33, that's a weird number. What if she says, you know what? Let's just round it up to 150. An extra 16, 17 bucks a month. I wonder what difference that would make. She makes that payment 150. The future value increases by $80,000. Yeah, assuming she gets the 8% interest. Then, if she moves that back here, 728, 821, and she plans on withdrawing monthly payments for 25 years, drawing this down to zero, what would her monthly payments be? And she'd actually increase her monthly income from $5,000 to $5,600 a month, only by adding in an extra $16. This is the magic of compound interest. If you're listening to this and you're young, you're about to start out, you know, that's something that a lot of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s said, oh, I wish I would have started this earlier. Something to think about, okay? I won't sermonize. I won't lecture you. But there is the completion of Section 3.3, Annuities, Loans, and Bonds. And again, strong use of the TVM solver is incredibly encouraged.